Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. Galatians 4, 21. The Bible says, tell me you who want to be under the law. Don't you hear what the law is saying? Does Abraham have two sons from two women? And these represent two covenants. One from Mount Sinai, which is Hagar, the concubine of Africa, of, of Abraham. This mountain is called Mount Sinai. It's in Arabia, not in Jerusalem. And they are in bondage with their children. It represents Jerusalem, which now is. But the Jerusalem, which is above, is free. And she, Jerusalem, in, in above, is our mother. I'm going to talk about this. The two women you should recognize. If you want to inherit anything. And when I come here, just explain also how you can live the spirit life. As long as you are not living the spirit life, you can inherit anything in this world. It's not possible. Ask somebody who believes in Christ. Because if you don't believe in Christ, you are group as flesh. You still have your parents who are flesh. The moment you become Christ believer, you are being born again. And this new birth, John 3, 6, Jesus said, they are born in spirit. People who are born of flesh, they are flesh. People who are born of spirit, they are spirit. So when you are talking about new birth, born again in Christ, you are talking about you are born again from flesh to spirit. If you don't understand this, you can't inherit anything in the world because all the blessings that God has given to you, they are, in spirit, they are spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1, 3. Spiritual blessings. Because that's what you are. And these spiritual blessings come to you when you believe in the gospel. The moment you go back to believe in whatever Moses taught from Mount Sinai, you go back to the flesh. So this differentiates the spirit and the flesh in the Bible. The New Testament. When you say flesh, it represents people who follow things that were taught from Mount Sinai. When we say spirit in the Bible, those who are led by the spirit, we are talking about those who are following the gospel. These are the two things you're supposed to understand. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3 says, Galatians chapter 3. Verse 1 to 3 say, O free great men who have the which you that not obey this to before your eyes, Jesus Christ was sent to set forth and crucified among you. I want to learn this from you. Do you receive the spirit? That makes you spirit. Because that spirit becomes your life and the spirit inside you. Do you receive the spirit? Capital letter is the spirit of God. Through the works of the law or by hearing of faith. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, do you now want to turn back to the flesh and make everything vain? He therefore that ministered to you the spirit and work miracles among you. Is it by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? The reason why there's no miracles in the church today and we are all following only fake miracles from angels is because of this. They teach us the works of the law. Pay tight, sow seed, obey ten commandments. Do this, that, bring anointing oil. These are works of the law. This is what we call it. The works of the law. They were taught from Mount Sinai. And they are from children who are in bondage. They are for children who are in bondage. They are not for children whose mother is Jerusalem in heaven. The moment you do that, you become flesh. So the word of God says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. Let's begin from verse 1, Galatians chapter 5. It said, Stand therefore in the liberty where Christ has set you free. Don't bond yourself again. Galatians 5 1. Verse 4. Christ become of no effect to any one of you who justify yourself by the law. You will fall from grace. Verse 8. This persuasion is not from the one who calls you. No. Verse 9. A little leaving, leaving the whole lamp. Verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. And you will not fulfill the last of the flesh. If you walk in the flesh, in the spirit, the flesh cannot have effect in your life again. Because 
the flesh lasted after the spirit. It tried to bring the spirit down. And the spirit is also against the flesh. So that you can't become anything in Christ. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 18. That's a warning. So you need to understand these two. This thing, flesh and spirit. You know, flesh can mean anything. It can mean your body. This is your body. It can also mean your birth and your people from our first birth. That's flesh. It can mean our human nature and the things we do without our human nature. The kind of corrupt things, kind of sinful things we do with our corrupt nature. They can represent the flesh. So know these three things when we mention see flesh in the New Testament. Flesh first as somebody who is worshipping things from Mount Sinai. Second, as your first birth from your first parents before you were born again. Third, represent our human nature and the weaknesses and the sins we do with it. So these three things are very important to you. And then spirit. Spirit represents the things that are taught by the gospel. Spirit. The things that are taught by the gospel. Why is it called the ministry of the spirit? The gospel called ministry of the spirit. Because Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord sent me to come and preach the gospel. So the spirit who was preached, who sent Jesus to come and preach it. So the gospel is called the ministry of the spirit. And people who believe are born spirits. So he said, if you walk in the spirit, walk in the gospel, and walk in your new birth, you will not fulfill the things of the flesh. Because the moment the flesh joins in, you can't do anything. You can't become anything. You can't inherit anything. As somebody who is born again, you have no power. The people who are not born again have more power than you when you become like them. That is why atheists are more rich and inheriting a lot. That is why Muslims are more rich and inheriting a lot are richer. That is why Buddhists are richer, Hindus are richer. That is why people who don't even believe in God are richer than Christians. Why? Because the moment the person who said, I believe in Christ, put himself under the things of Monsana, behave like somebody in the world, behave like a traditionalist, he becomes weaker. He, he, because this is what the word of God says. Galatians 3.10 As many as of the works of the law and the curse, he's talking to these people who believe in Christ. Not the Israelites. The Israelites can be under the law and will still be blessed because they are biological seed of Abraham. Like the Persians, the Persians in the Gulf, like the Saudi Arabians, they are all the seed of Abraham. They are very rich. Go to Emirates now and see money. Go to Qatar and see money. When Isaac was born, their mother, Hagar, has already given birth to Ishmael. And Salah said, drive this maid and his son away. And Abraham didn't want to do that because Ishmael was his first son. God said, listen to your wife, drive her away. I will bless her, his seed. And the seed of Ishmael, where these emulates those Qatar, those Saudi Arabians, they, they are very rich, Kuwait, those, they are the ones who are serving Mount Sinai. And there are Jews who join them. But the Jews who are of God, they, are, they serve what is called Mount Zion. David and the tribe of Judah, not all the tribe, not all the Jews, but David's house, they were called people of Mount Zion, and a lot of them. So not all Israelites are true people of God. Not all Israelites. It is in Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, Paul himself was said, when the eyes was open, that it's not everybody who's calling Israel is a true Israelite. He said that in Romans chapter 9. So you need to understand this.